everyone. Welcome to our little babes. And this week we're doing sensory make and take for babies. And this time we are doing a sensory drum. And so if you got a kit, you would have gotten some kind of a can in it. If you didn't get a kit and you're just saving it, you would be looking for some kind of a can with a metal bottom and a plastic top. So this is a coffee can, that's one choice. This is a Nesquik can and it has the metal and the plastic. This is a coffee one too, but it's long and skinny. A little bit harder for a baby to use as a drum, but it does have the metal bottom. Or you could maybe find a Folgers one, which does not have metal, but has a, a different sounding bottom from the top. So that can be used as well. Okay, and so... Once you have your can, of course, you would wash it out and clean it out so there's nothing uh, left inside food-wise. And then you would be looking for um, some rocks or uh, rice that you might want to put in, some um, tape. I'm using this clear wide tape. Um, you might want to find a hot glue gun so you can hot glue the lid on. You'll need some scissors. And then, as I mentioned, rice or rocks. So those are all the things you need. And um, the rice and rocks we're gonna talk about later, they're kind of optional as well. Okay, so when you're thinking about making a drum for a baby, um, you really are aiming more towards when they start to sit up. So for the a little bit older baby, because that gives them the opportunity to use it that way, or you know, banging on both ends. So those are some options. For the little ones that aren't sitting yet, it would be more likely used rolling so that they could kind of follow it with their eyes to begin with and then later get around crawling around and getting, um, getting at it that way. Okay, so um, with all these cans, you don't have to worry about decorating them because they're already attractive to babies. They've got bright graphics on them or they're shiny and Babies love that, so you don't need to decorate the outside and worry about any of that kind of thing. Um, they'll certainly be attracted to them. Now, as far as the sound is concerned, as I mentioned, the bottom, of course, is metal and the top is plastic, and those sound different. You know, so um, what you can do is you can, if your baby is used to sounds, loud sounds and that, you can add different things inside of it before you close it up. So I'm going to put... I just put three three rocks in there, so I just have some normal rocks from the driveway, um, you know, and put that in, and then I'll put the lid on, and then because it's metal all around, it's quite noisy. Quieter this way because it's against the lid, or it's so noisier that way. Now that might be too much noise for your baby. You'll have to decide. Okay and then we would seal it up. Now, if you think that's too much noise, we'll take those out. And this is what a bit of rice, about that much rice. So about two tablespoons of rice. And close it up. And that might be better, you know, for your baby if they like the quieter sound. And then, of course, adding more rice, a couple handfuls, will, of course, change the sound again. So you can decide what you want to do with that, okay? I'm going to leave the rice in there for now. Oh, and another choice is you can put the paper clips in, too. So I have some of the the bigger paper clips and they make a nice noise too. So I'll just dump that out for now. And I'll put, let's see, I'll put five paper clips in and we'll see what kind of noise that makes. Not bad, it's kind of a medium noise, so not too loud. So um, you can decide what you would like to do uh, according to your personality of your baby. It's important that you think about um, you know what the baby is comfortable with when you're making something 
because you wouldn't want a toy to scare the baby every time they use it. You want them to be happy to play with it and look forward to playing with it. So I think I'll add the rice again because I think that was the best sound for what I want to do with this. Okay, so then um, you could just put the lid on and give it to the baby and that's it. But the thing is that if it were rocks in here, they'd be choking hazard. Um, you know, you don't want them to get the lid off and spread whatever's in it all over the place. So what we do is we glue around the edge and then glue the lid on. And so I would glue, glue around this edge, glue around this edge, and then put them together and glue it on. And then once I've done that, and I've got my glue gun here, we'll put some glue around that and some glue around here and then put them together. I have what you call a backup safety measure. I would tape it too. So I would put tape all the way around and tape the lid on so that then you're sure that the glue hasn't dried out and it's gonna come open or that your baby's gonna swallow what's in there. And so I would just um, take my scissors and cut tape and put it around. And so you're not only taping onto the side, but of course onto the top too, to um, ensure that it's sealed. And um, you can do it twice if you're really worried about your baby getting in. Um, some babies are better at that fine motor stuff than others. So you would put the tape on the side, from here to here I did, and then fold it over and then go all the way around. And voila. There's your noise maker. Okay, the other thing is to consider when you're putting things inside is weight. And again, a can has a little bit of weight to it. These are probably a little bit lighter um, than this because this is metal. Um, so you wouldn't want anything that's too heavy that a baby can't lift because then they just won't play with it. Um, so if you're putting rocks in, don't put too many in, be, again, because of weight as well as the noise. Okay, so those are all the things to keep in, um, to consider when you are making your thing, your can or drum. Okay, and then after that, some other things. Now, um, how do you get your baby to play with it? So if you had a baby who was still on their back on the floor and maybe moving a little bit, then you might be more apt to put it near them and shake it to show them it has some sound. And if it's a young baby, maybe a little bit more sound would be more attractive to them. And then once you get them, show them how to shake it and watch their facial expressions, why then you can go from there and you can show them how it rolls because that will be very interesting to babies that it rolls, okay? Um, and then as they start to get moving, crawling or scooching around or however, they're, they'll be able to chase it as it rolls. And it's not really until the baby is sitting that they would really be using it more like a drum. And that way you can show them how to pat it and then they can learn how to hit it themselves. If there are a younger baby, they might want to use a spoon to hit it. And then once they get this sound, then they might want to start this. And then once they get that, then you might want to turn over and show them this sound because that will be a very surprising sound for them and they may or may not like it. Um, if you have an older baby, you might want to use an older or a bigger spoon. You know, so these are just spoons from the drawer in the kitchen. It's nothing special. You could also use wood th items like um, a chopstick. Chopsticks are a little long and end up poking themselves in the face, so you might want to break it down a little bit shorter. Um, you might use a clothespin, one of the longer ones. Um, you know, things like that will all um, be very intriguing to them. So then once they have that sound down, then visually um, you uh, would like to attract them with the color. So showing them this colored top first, or as this one is all the way around, you won't have any trouble attracting to that, you know, to show them where to, where to, how it works and to draw them to it. You should make sure that whatever can you are making that there are no little catches in the metal or catches in the plastic or anything that might hurt their mouse because they are going to be chewing on it. They'll be mousing it at the start. 
and so you want to worry about whether or not there's anything that can hurt them. So that includes a rip in the, a tear in the plastic, you know, a little nick in the can that's rough, um, you know, anything like that. So you just want to be careful of that. Um, and then tracking. And so again, for that young baby, you can use it as a tracking thing. So something to shake and move and get see if their eyes follow it as you move it while you're shaking it. So shaking it and the colors attract them and then by moving it you can see if they can follow it or not and that's called tracking. So those are all fun things to do. Um, you know I wouldn't introduce all the sounds at the same time. I would start with the um, less least noisy of the sounds and then work from there and show them the other sounds as you go along and then the, the bottom of course is the noisiest, the metal and that one lasts, just so they won't be scared. Um, and then some other things you can do with it, as I mentioned, the rolling. So once they're walking around and that, even when they're walking, they can use it by rolling it and it will be um, fun to chase when they start to walk. So this can last up to about 18 months. Um, you may have a baby who decides to take the lid off before that in which case then you should probably take it away if you can't tape it to be secure. So some kids will even pick the tape off once they're a little bit older. So you really have to not leave this out forever and ever. You have to keep checking it and make sure that it's still safe. Um, and then a couple of other things that what this is good for, because this is so big, it, it uh, your baby will start to pick it up with more of a grasp like this and start chewing on it and then they'll try to grab it like this, but it's too big for them. Whereas if, the, if you're using one of these, that's gonna be easier for them to grasp. And then eventually what you want is the grasp like this and bringing it to their mouth, which is how it will start. And that's great because um, about four months, they should start to be grabbing toys this way and picking or picking up with one hand and adding the other hand, you know? Um, and so you wanna work on um, fine motor and and the drum is a good way to do that and of course holding on to a spoon is fine motor as well um, It teaches them that grasp for the spoon which eventually they'll use for coloring and for writing and etc So those are all the things you can do with the drum Once you've made it just be careful. It will be hot. So don't give it directly to the baby and as I say check it on a regular basis to make sure it hasn't got any damage on it or that it um, hasn't um, started to come apart or anything was wrong with it. So have fun with your drum and your baby. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for coming today. We'll see you again. Bye.